I'm not doing anything is the next next allegation. I can't do anything is my answer. No, why don't you meet them? I've met them. But you're not doing anything. I can't. <laughs> Adir ji, please understand, I don't have the right to change as per my whims and fancies that I like a state or this state is against my party politics and therefore, no way. Non-BJP rule states are being deprived from having their legitimate due. Have you started spending on items which you were not supposed to spend? I'm not even questioning that. Do spend it, but don't put the blame on me. Adir ji, I'm sorry, six, uh, till six months ago, which government was there, it's not my uh, role now to talk. Hunky dory it was. No, it's not. Introspect, please. I have no role. In fact, in fact, I would have to follow it 100%. So this apprehension that some states are being dis uh, discriminated against, is a politically vitiated narrative which, I'm sorry to say, vested interests are happy to go about saying it. There's just not a possibility that any finance minister can intervene to say, I don't like this state, stop the payment. No way. It cannot happen that way. Madam, so the devolution of taxes, including GST, everything has been prescribed by our constitutions and it is and constitutional mandate which is to be abided by you. But Madam, don't take it otherwise. There is a general perception being grown across the nation that non-BJP rule states are being deprived from having their legitimate due. The latest example is Karnataka, where the entire ministry has been agitating against the indiscriminate and arbitrary attitude of your administrations. They are alleging that they are being famished by sheer discrimination being played from your ministry. I would like to know whether state government of Karnataka has been deprived from obtaining their legitimate due because few months ago, the situation was not there. That time everything was going hunky-dory. But after the new installation of government, because the non-BJP government has been assumed there, since then the trouble has been started on. What is the reason behind this kind of deprivation? Tamil Nadu was? Sir, devolution to the states. This is beyond, of course, this question, sir, but still because it's an important question on which the leader of the opposition is asking a question. I would certainly respond. Devolution to the states happens in the direct tax matters as per the recommendation given by the Finance Commission. The GST, particularly the SGST, the state GST, goes 100% to the states. No one can do anything with it. It has automatic provision that 100% collected by the states will be with them. I repeat, 100% is with them. IGST is collected because it involves a lot of interstate payments. It is periodically reviewed also by the GST Council. It is because states should get the money in their hand roughly, grossly, 50% is divided, and then periodically it is readjusted to actuals. So if a state were to get 41 and not 50, adjustment happens. If a state were to get 52, adjustment happens. So every now and then, when money gets accumulated under the IGST, it is divided grossly at 50-50 to all states, and gets reconciled over the time according to the data that comes up. The CGST is divided as per the advice, 42% goes of the Finance Commission. So if this is direct tax, uh, uh, GST, sir, direct taxation is completely determined by the proportions decided and suggested and accepted and implemented by the central government.
Now, of course, some states, and this rate fixation is nothing to do with the government of India. Rate fixation as to how much should go to a state is done by the Finance Commission. And does the Finance Commission sit in one place and take a call on it? No. It goes all over, meets with every state government, talks to them, and only then submits the report. I want to humbly submit before you so that Adirji, please understand, I don't have the right to change as per my whims and fancies that I like a state or this state is against my party politics and therefore, no way. I have no role. In fact, in fact, I would have to follow it 100%. And that's what I've done in my term here. And that's what every finance minister does in their term. Finance Commission giving recommendation, that which I have to implement, it is done without any kind of fear or favor or anything like that. So this apprehension that some states are being dis uh, discriminated against is a politically vitiated narrative which, I'm sorry to say, vested interests are happy to go about saying it. There's just not a possibility that any finance minister can intervene to say, I don't like this state, stop the payment. No way. It cannot happen that way. The systems are well placed that the recommendations of the Finance Commission for every month's devolution will have to happen. But now that Adirji himself has said, politically you're doing this, I want to also say, and he, I, I want to. All right, let me answer your first question and also join you on your second additional point. Sir, Adir Ranjanji saying in this first place only said six months, till six months it was all hunky dory, now it's not. Can I, seeking your indulgence, say, uh, till six months if it was hunky dory, what's going wrong now? Have you started spending on items which you were not supposed to spend? I'm not even questioning that. Do spend it, but don't put the blame on me. Don't put the blame on the center because it goes by the rule book. It has to give it, it will give. If the expenditure are going into areas which cannot be sustained by your budget, I'm not answerable for that. So, Adirji, I'm sorry, six, uh, till six months ago, which government was there? It's not my uh, role now to talk. Hunky-dory it was. No, it's not. Introspect, please. You're saying that. I didn't say that. You're saying that. Sir, therefore, therefore, Adirji, I respect him. I give him detailed answer. But if there is an insinuation that it's because me holding money here, I'm sorry. When the Finance Commission comes, please tell your needs. Please tell your requirements. Please tell your status. And let the Finance Commission fix it. It's a constitutional body. Sir? Okay, okay. Finance Commission is now... Oh, oh. One minute, one minute. Please. Oh, surely. I'll, I'll certainly sit with the Karnataka Minister, Deputy Chief Minister, Honorable Mem uh, D.K. Shukmarji came and met me. He told me about the difficulties. I've heard him. I've given him the matter-of-fact answer. It's not as if I don't want to meet state authorities, state uh, uh, ministers. I can't do as long as the Finance Commission doesn't tell me to do. Constitutionally, unless the Finance Commission tells me to do something, I cannot. I don't have the discretion. Adirji, please don't imagine that I have a discretion to play around with Finance Commission's recommendations. Please talk to the Finance Commission. I'm not talking about generosity. Sir, I'm talking about Finance Commission's recommendation, which I follow to the last word. I'm not talking about anybody's generosity. So, let us please talk on the terms. Gen Finance Commission gives me a recommendation, I follow it. Now suddenly Adirji says, meet up the state. I've met up the state. I'm not doing anything, it's the next, next allegation. I can't do anything, it's my answer. No, why don't you meet them? I've met them. But you're not doing anything, I can't. 